Fox Sports. We are Blackboard. We are Arizona. Clear and cool here in the Valley. We don't see a lot of that here. We haven't seen a season or series victory over the Giants here at Chase Field in three years. But a win tonight means a series win to open up the season on opening week. The Giants banged up to start the year. And the D-backs set to pounce after last night's exciting win. It's Diamondbacks baseball tonight on Fox Sports Arizona+. Plus. Good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume and Bob Brenly along the way. The Diamondbacks here with a chance to begin their season with a series victory over the defending champion San Francisco Giants. Last night they got the win. Ruby De La Rosa got the victory. And tonight that was his Diamondbacks debut. Bob, it's Jeremy Hellickson's turn on his birthday tonight. How about that pitching on his birthday? There's a saying in baseball, or rather a philosophy in baseball, that coming from the American League East, there's always a honeymoon period when you come to the National League. You see the numbers for Hellickson this spring. He was very, very good at times when he was commanding that fastball. He was almost unhittable. Uh, you come from the American League East, a lot of small ballparks, a lot of great offensive teams. And uh, first year in the National League, we'll see how Jeremy does. Now, there was a concern about the Diamondbacks offensively that maybe they're too right-handed, but last night, Chip Hale had a really nice right-left mix, I thought, when he went Goldie, Peralta, Trumbo, Lamb. They're back in there tonight in that same order. The left-hand bats, Bob, have really stepped up so far. Yeah, and that's going to be a key uh, not only in the first series of the year, but all season long. David Peralta really looked good last year. Jake Lamb has really looked good in the early going this season. Going to need those two guys to produce all year long to help out those right-handers in the lineup. And you've got rookie Chris Heston making just his second big league start a right-hander, so Lamb and Peralta key bats tonight for the Diamondbacks. We are just about set to go. Last night we saw the bullpen do a tremendous job in holding on to a one-run lead. So far the bullpen has been perfect. Try and keep that going. Diamondbacks baseball coming up here on Fox Sports Arizona+. Plus.
Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Cox Gigablast. How will you live the gig life? By Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. We welcome you back as the Diamondbacks opening series with the San Francisco Giants continues. It's the rubber match between these division foes. I'm Kate Longworth here at Chase Field counting you down to first pitch. Well, the Arizona Diamondbacks have that elusive first win under the belts, but it's been a rather slow start for the starters. However, Arizona has the bullpen to carry them through. The relievers have thrown eight shutout innings in these first two games, allowing just five hits while walking two. And the relievers told me they take pride in being one of the strengths of this team, while the starters said they take comfort knowing this pen is there to back them up. And the relievers let me in on a little secret. They said that already they have formed a little friendly competition where they really go out there and try to match the reliever before them's performance. So far, it's been working out pretty nicely for the Arizona Diamondbacks, and we'll see now how it plays out in game three of this three game set. The Diamondbacks have a chance to take the series win from the defending world champs. We'll take you to first pitch. It's coming up next. Sit tight. Had a chance to win a series here at Chase Field against these Giants for the first time in three years and take a winning record into tomorrow's off day before those Dodgers come in here over the weekend. Diamondbacks have lost their last eight series versus San Francisco here at Chase and in his Diamondback debut on his birthday, Bob, they'll turn to the new guy, Jeremy Hellickson, try and reverse that trend. Well, you know he's excited to take the ball tonight for the Diamondbacks, his first start of the regular season. This is a guy that has done pretty much everything up to this point. You go back to 09, he was the Tampa Bay Rays organizational pitcher of the year. The following season, the minor league player of the year. 2011, he was the American League rookie of the year. He's also got a gold glove to his credit. And taking the mound tonight for the Diamondbacks, making his debut in the National League. Yeah, he survived in the AL East, and now Chip Hale will watch as Hellickson converts to the National League West. He is healthy, more than a year removed from elbow surgery, and gets ready to take on this division in his Diamondbacks debut tonight. He is our Arizona Ford starting pitcher. Not the first time he's pitched in his ballpark. You see the numbers last year with the Tampa Bay Rays. Spent most of the first half of last season recovering from that elbow surgery. And the latter two months, sort of a, kind of a get your feet back under you kind of a thing. So you really do throw out these numbers. He's got a good track record with Tampa Bay. 
Yeah, not a big guy physically out there on the mound. He stands about, uh, let's see, 6'1", it says in the media guide. I'm not so sure about that, but uh, the height doesn't seem to make much difference if you can throw the ball over the plate consistently. If he's 6'1", I'm 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Well, the Giants hurting without Pence and Belt and Peavy and Kane. Ishikawa, tough beginning for San Francisco. And the Dubinbacks have a chance here to take advantage and get this series win to open up the season. Nori Aoki is in the left-hand batter's box. Jake Lamb creeps in at third base, and we are underway at Chase Field. There's the strike. Rob Drake is the plate umpire tonight. The numbers on Aoki last season as a Kansas City Royal when he played against these Giants in the World Series. And he's got a 10-game hit streak dating back to last season when he was with the Royals. Aoki had a double in the fifth inning last night. Hellickson ahead 0-2. We've talked about this, Bob. We had, Jeremy, a couple of starts in our spring training coverage here for you on Fox Sports Arizona. And you always say is start in the strike zone and then expand for him, right? Yeah, occasionally he will nibble around the edges, but as long as he's ahead in the count, I think that's a very good way to go about attacking opposing hitters. The problem is when you nibble first and fall behind in the count, now you're forced to throw a strike. That's when he becomes a little bit vulnerable. A base hit in the left. The lineup for Bruce Bochy tonight. They're without Brandon Bell, who injured a groin last night in the ballgame, had to come out. Yeah, among the other problems that the Giants have right now, there's a lineup tonight. Nori Aoki on first base after that hit into left field. Matt Duffy at second base. Angel Pagan out in center field. Buster Posey moves out to first base tonight. Casey McGee once again at third base. Justin Maxwell getting the start in right field with Brandon Crawford at short. Hector Sanchez doing the catching and Chris Heston making his major league debut tonight on the mound. Matt Duffy getting the start at second base. Up down the bunt, third base side. Hellickson, the Golden Glover, kicks it. And the first two have reach for the Giants. See, the back of that glove is gold. You get to do that once you've won a gold glove award, but uh, that one got away from Jeremy a bit. Yeah, just got a little bit ahead of himself right there. Went to make the backhanded play. Just didn't get the glove down there far enough. He may have still been okay had he not kicked the ball into foul territory, eliminating any chance of getting an out. They rule that a sacrifice and an E1. So the error on the pitcher. Two on, nobody out for Angel Pagan. And what a start to the season he's had. Pagan batting 500 on the year. He hit 300 in an injury plague season last year. Comes into tonight with a 13 game hitting streak against the D backs. And during that stretch, he's hit 491. Seven doubles, a homer, and 10 RBIs. If a guy has numbers like that against uh, an opposing team, uh, you really need to go back and check your scouting reports and see if you're pitching him the right way. Now, maybe it's just a lack of execution by the pitchers trying to hit their spots or execute their pitches, but anytime a guy hits close to 500 against you, you've got to really seriously consider reevaluating your scouting report. Well, Jeremy, and this is key for him, as Bob mentioned, stay ahead in the count. The career numbers against the Diamondbacks, how about 336 in 65 games? Pagan was three for four in the opener Monday night. Last night he doubled and scored, walked and scored. Along the left field line, Jake Lamb gives it a look. 
and Angel Pagan was the man at the plate for the Giants when Addison Reed finally punched him out to end the ball game last night and let Chip Hale's mom take a deep breath. <laughs> Yvonne Hale, it was a lot of fun watching her in that ninth inning last night. And another great job by the D-backs bullpen. They really shut the door. Delgado, Marshall, and Reed, 7 8 9. And mom, Bob, she's back and got the glasses on. Nice. Started a superstition last night. High fly ball left field. Peralta coming in. They retire Pagan for the first out. Let's take a look at the Diamondbacks defensively behind their right hander. David Peralta in left field tonight. A.J. Pollock man center field. Mark Trumbo on pace for 162 triples this year. He'll be out in right field. Jake Lamb and Cliff Pennington on the left side of the infield with Chris Owings and Paul Goldschmidt on the right side. G. Money, Gerald Laird getting a start behind the plate today for right hander Jeremy Hellickson. 162 triples. I say he gets it. <laughs> Buster Posey getting the start at first base with belt injured. You know, some speculation that Belt has to spend any time on the disabled list that Buster Posey would move down to first base on a full time basis and they would call up their catching young catching prospect Andrew Susak. Belt said last night he doesn't believe that the groin he tweaked is too serious. He can't afford any more injuries already without Hunter Pence and down Peavy and Kane in the rotation which is why Heston is pitching tonight this was last night watch Brandon Belt at first yeah, a little pop up behind first base and as he turned and pivoted and tried to accelerate after that ball he uh, just blew a tire right there pulled up lame obviously tried to talk his way back into the game but Bruce Bochy and the training staff would have none of it Ellickson behind two balls and no strikes make it three and oh Casey McGee on deck. Good speed on the bases for the Giants. Aoki on second, Duffy at first. That's out of play. Jeremy Hellickson commands that fastball well to both sides of the plate. He lives on the edges of the strike zone. Changes speeds well. He will pitch inside. He's not afraid to do that. And as you've seen so far, he generally works with that four seam fastball somewhere 88 to 91. And a very good changeup. Everything he throws has nice movement on it, nothing straight. Drop in an occasional curveball as well. 3 1 to Buster. This is where you might think about nibbling a little bit and what is very much a hitter's count for Buster Posey. He gets a lot of opposing hitters. You just go right at him, throw a fastball in the strike zone, take your chances. But uh, with Buster Posey, uh, it might be a good idea to try to work a corner somewhere. And if you miss, miss in your favor. Miss is low and the bases are loaded with one out. Casey McGee. Two eighty seven last year and four homers for the Miami Marlins. He was the National League comeback player of the year after one season in Japan. Aoki is the runner at third. Duffy at second and Posey at first. Change up. Yeah, you'll see a lot of those tonight when he gets in trouble. That's uh, that's his go to pitch really sells it. Well, we saw Ruby De La Rosa throw a lot of nice change ups in the ball game last night. I'm sure Jeremy Hellickson was going to school watching that game last night. You saw the nice movement on that pitch down and into the right hand hitter. They come inside again and it eats up McGee. That's a foul ball says Rob Drake behind the plate. Casey McGee's had trouble laying off that pitch off the plate inside. We saw him swing it a couple last night. 
Very nearly the same result, fouling him off his leg or foul down that third baseline. Notice, Bob, that Gerald Laird behind the plate will wait until the pitcher delivers the ball to set up his target. He stands very still right in the middle and then sets up where he wants the pitch just as the pitcher is starting that motion. Yeah, very fine line. You don't want to set up so early that the base coaches or the base runner or even the hitter himself can see where you are back there, but if you wait too long, it could be distracting to the pitcher. Another pitch right in on the knuckles. Let's get them all tied up inside. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially a guy that relies as much as he does on the straight changeup. If you can establish that fastball inside, try to speed the bats up a little bit to get to the fastball, they become vulnerable to that changeup away. Another 0 2. Going away here. Drifted back out over the plate, but again, McGee fouls it off. Alexson does not get strikeouts with his fastball. He does throw it consistently four strikes and spots it. But when he wants a swing and a miss, it's that changeup. Fastball down and away for the strikeout. That's a big out there, two down. Right fielder, number 43. Pounding him in on the hands the entire at bat. Throws a fastball with a little cutting action at 90 just off that outside corner. Feeble attempt by McGee to catch up to that one. Yeah, that's exactly what you talk about expanding the zone. Get the hitter to expand the strike zone. That was a perfect example right there. Justin Maxwell, bases loaded, two down. Hellickson now with 20 pitches in the first. Bounce to second base, Chris Owings. And Jeremy Hellickson does a tremendous job there. The strikeout and the ground ball, and he leaves them loaded. We are underway at Chase Field. L. Heston, the minor league guy, a career minor leaguer, gets the start tonight. So how do you find out about a guy like this? Well, we asked hitting coach Turner Ward. There's always places to go. I mean, from the minor league system, there's so much video to that standpoint. Even from his starts from last year, um, you know, you get to go back and look at some of the history and just kind of see where he was. And even though we didn't face him, we kind of see what this type of pitcher he is. Well, he was supposed to pitch the opener later this week for the first ever game at Sacramento as the Giants' new AAA affiliate. Instead, he will make just his second major league start here tonight, only two days shy of his 27th birthday. 
Yeah, I stand corrected. I said earlier he was making his major league debut. He pitched in three games for the Giants last year, including one start, a total of five and a third innings pitch. But yeah, when you're trying to garner information on a guy you don't know much about, that's where the spider web of baseball comes in. Somebody may have seen him in A ball or double A ball or ouch. Played against him in college. Somebody will have a scouting report. Well, Eston has worked only five and a third career innings in the major leagues all last year. In fact, his only other big league start came in the final game of the season last year. He did have a fairly impressive spring in Scottsdale this season. 15 innings gave up only 10 hits. He started against the Dodgers regulars on March 27th and pitched well. Six innings of four hit ball. Chris Owings back in the starting lineup at second base. And again, Heston fires strike one in there. Diamondbacks have some speed at the top tonight with A.J. Pollock and Chris Owings. And uh, the catcher, Hector Sanchez for the Giants, uh, has a tendency to uh, catch like he's wearing boxing gloves back there. He doesn't always catch everything cleanly. So uh, as a base runner, you want to be alert, work for an aggressive secondary lead. They throw it away. It rolls into right field, and A.J. is going to head for third. Starting pitcher with an error in the first inning of the ball game tonight. Quick feed out there by Help or Heston rather, but uh, just made an errant throw over to Buster Posey, who has played quite a bit of first base, but it's not his most natural position. I don't think uh, Brandon Belt could have got to that one. AJ with those high knees flying around the bases. He's at third now. And still an 0 1 count to Chris Owings. Now we'll see if CO can just hit something to the right side of the infield, bringing that run. Trying right, to do it right there. We saw that was a key play, Bob. I thought in the game last night when Jake Lamb had that early RBI following the Trumbo triple. It turned out to be a big play in the game, a one-run ball game, and it was a very similar situation. And Jake Lamb just got a pitch out over the plate. He could beat on the ground up the middle of the field and drove home Mark Trumbo after he had tripled. It turned out to be a huge run in the ball game. at the shortstop and that's good enough. RBI for CO one nothing Diamondbacks lead. There you go. Get him on the plate. It doesn't always have to be a line drive in the gap or a home run in the seats. Just put the ball in play with the infield playing back and a runner at third and give your team the lead. He really reached down and got this one. Looked like a breaking ball working its way off that outside corner and down one handed swing once again anywhere but right back to the pitcher and the Diamondbacks are going to take the lead and that's exactly what they do. Oh, the Giants have the bases loaded and one out can't get a run in. Diamondbacks two batters in have a one nothing lead. Here's Goldie strike one. You're reading Bruce Bochy's mind right now. That's exactly what he's thinking. Wait a minute. I wonder if the voice in his head sounds like his actual voice. I don't know. <laughs> did you ask him about Heston? I did ask him yesterday before the ball game, and he said, you know, he's a four pitch guy. He relies heavily on a sinker and a slider, keeps the ball down. When he's good, he gets a lot of ground balls, but uh, he wasn't uh, exactly overwhelming with his praise of the young man. Of course, Boach has got a lot of issues on his uh, plate right now. Trying to find healthy bodies. Giants are really, really beat up. Pence and Belt and Peavy and Kane, Travis Ishikawa. And they have a tough uh, beginning here, San Francisco. Diamondbacks have a day off tomorrow. But the Giants open their season by playing 14 consecutive days. They don't get a day off until April 20th. Boy, they set up down and away, and Heston missed the glove by about four feet. And missed up and in. Yeah, you always worry about that after Goldie uh, had his hand broken last year. That one didn't miss by much, but uh, Sanchez just kind of olayed that one, let it go all the way to the backstop. That was a big miss for the pitcher. 2 2 now.
Called strike three. Rings up Goldschmidt. Here's the lineup for Chip Hale, who got his first win as a big league skipper last night. AJ at the top has already scored a run. Chris Owens has already driven in a run. Goldie just went down on strikes. David Peralta making his way to the plate out in left field tonight. Mark Trumbo in right field. Jake Lamb at third base. Gerald Laird manning the catching position with Cliff Pennington at shortstop and Jeremy Hellickson on the mound. One of the hitting heroes from last night, David Peralta. And the left hand bats from Peralta and Lamb against Heston will be key tonight. First pitch swing and a little dribbler up the first base line that rolls foul. One of the longest home runs I think we've seen in this ballpark last night. Made that sound off the bat. There was no doubt that was going to be a home run. The only question was how far back in those right field bleachers was it going to land? Chip Hale said after the ball game and talking about David Peralta. Talked about a guy who is strong, got a nice short swing, and he really is becoming a smart hitter. And as Chip Hale described him, he's a beast. Chip says he's called David that all spring. You're a beast, a big, strong guy up there, age 27. to short and backs up Crawford with quick hands and he throws it out. Diamondbacks have a one nothing lead. Good time now to visit Food Truck Alley. Brand new here at the ballpark. The first ever dad and daughter special event Sunday here at Chase Field. Every special event ticket includes a D-backs dad or D-backs daughter hat and an exclusive keepsake photo. You can get your tickets right now online at dbacks.com slash events. Well, it's a crazy game. Giants have the bases loaded in the first. Can't get a run home. Diamondbacks get a run in the home half of the first without the benefit of a base hit and they lead 1-0. Brandon Crawford. Slices that foul down the left field line. Nice cool night here. Roof open, panels open. Nothing but clear skies overhead. And I checked in, as always, uh, BB, with our, well, a member of the new Weather Executive Council, Ralph Kelso, who assured me that we would have nice cool temperatures throughout uh, the weekend. Can't hold up there, and it's 0-2. What's his official title? I, I saw oh, he had a jacket. He, made up. Yeah, yeah, he was walking around here, Ralph. There's Ralph Kelso. And it, frankly, you know, there was a little swagger. And he's got a jacket that says Executive Council. He apparently was promoted somehow. I was. Congratulations, Ralph. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Ralph is the man. But Ralph, I'd have to say, Bob, his weather reports are spot on. That's good to hear. Yeah, so. 
After this uh, weekend, Ralph says, a little warmer, but uh, we're good through the weekend for nice, clear, cool skies. Ellickson living around the edges of the strike zone. Crawford doesn't chase. And it's even two and two. What a night here. Just gorgeous. Well, Brandon Crawford. Every year, Bob, it seems like he's better and better offensively. He used to be all glove and no bat, and it just does seem every year he's a little better up there at yeah, the plate. Yeah, and very aggressive in this opening series of the season. He swung at a lot of first pitches. He's done some damage on those first pitches. Hacked at the first pitch of this A.B. before finally getting a fastball up and out over the plate. And flipping it out there into left field. For a base hit. So here's the catcher. Hector Sanchez, the switch hitter. Just under 200 last year. He's got the start behind the plate. Buster Posey at first. Brandon Belt out with that injury. And once again, the leadoff man in the inning reaches against Jeremy Hellickson, making his Diamondbacks debut tonight. Sanchez is a guy that had some injury issues last year. He was put on the concussion DL in late July and Starts to come back. He was rehabbing with Triple-A Fresno. Took a foul tip off the mask and suffered another concussion. And as a result, was not able to play for the Giants last year. After late July, and that's when we saw Andrew Susak mm -hmm. come up, who you mentioned a moment ago. Now Sanchez uh, gets nicked with a lot of foul balls. He's a catcher that sits up very high behind the plate. Uh, gives those foul balls a, a big target to hit, if you will. And uh, he's taken his share. Missed 66 games last year because of the two concussions. Crawford holds it first, and Sanchez fouls that one away. Well, while we have a moment, let's take a look at our Valley Honda keys to the game. And for Jeremy Hellickson, welcome to the dry heat after pitching down in Tampa, Florida, and that humidity. He's got to love this tonight. And as far as his opposite number, he's no Charlton. Heston, I see what you did there. Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> Could have gone a number of ways there. Well, we tried, but just showed some, showed some real restraint. Yeah. I mean, you know, Charlton Heston is filmography, if you will. There's so many quotable lines from movies, but uh, none that really seem to apply to the game of baseball. I, I like part the outfielders, you know. Like the Red Sea? Yeah. I thought at least it'd give me a Dr. Zayas reference, something. Planet of the Apes, Ben Hur, the whole thing. Three balls and a strike. That's a fair ball. Ellison thinks about second, settles for the out at first. Crawford moves up, one down. Much more under control that time on that little tapper to the left side. It seemed like he was a little bit of a rush for Matt Duffy's butt catcher back in the first inning. That time took his time, realized with the catcher Sanchez running, he had plenty of time to for sure get the out at first base. Takes a quick look at second and makes the right decision. And here is Chris Heston. Popcorn. <laughs> Great thing about that is after the game, you get to take that helmet home. Mm -hmm. Shortstop with Pennington out there today. Two down. Nori Aoki comes up now. Aoki in the series opener Monday. Had two hits, scored a run, and a double last night. He's one for one so far tonight. And now going back to last year with an 11 game hitting streak. 
guy's a tough out. He's got those quick wrists. Everything, he's just sort of, it's like he's right there. He just kind of flicks the bat like that. Almost like he's fly fishing up there. We were talking about that last night with David Peralta, same kind of thing. Uh, Oki, uh, yeah, a lot of Japanese players, uh, you think back to Ichiro, a lot of moving parts, the high leg kick, almost like a wind up in the batter's box. And for me, that always makes a guy susceptible to pitches away, especially fastballs up and away, change ups low and away. Trying to come in there and almost hit him. I told you a moment ago, Hellickson will pitch inside. He's not afraid to come in there. He's got pretty good command. Almost got away from him that time, however. Norioki taking a page out of the Hunter Pence book. Only one batting glove. The bottom hand with the glove, the top hand, no glove. That's an unusual look. You don't see that much anymore. The funny thing, he's got a little elbow pad on there, but he's got his elbow out over the plate. There's Hunter Pence, who was hit by a pitch right at the beginning of spring training. There's the pad on Aoki's elbow. Got his hands, elbows, wrists all hanging out over the plate there. And into left center field. Crawford will score easily. And Aoki is headed for second. He's in there with an RBI double. Two for two. One one ball game. Well, Hellickson came in with a reputation, came into spring training rather, with a reputation of being a guy that nibbles a little too much. But he's been hurt a couple of times tonight when he's been ahead in the count. This fastball up and out over the plate. I think Penny got screened by Brandon Crawford as he ran by. Didn't get a great jump on that line drive, but the Giants tie it up. And Oki in scoring position for Matt Duffy. Getting the start at second base tonight. in there back to back RBI doubles have given the Giants a 2 1 lead. Both those hits coming with two outs. That must be living right. I'll tell you, this is the kind of swing that should not produce a base hit. Ball right in on his hands. Just kind of fisted down that first baseline, stays just fair down into the corner for an RBI double. Mike Parkey out to the mound. See, if I was a pitcher, that would drive me nuts. Has to, right? You know, you make a mistake and a guy hits the ball hard, you tip your cap to him, you say you had a good at bat, you beat me that time. But when you make a good pitch and the batter gets jammed as badly as Duffy just did, and it still results in an RBI double, that would really chap me. So four hits now for the Giants. Three of them in this inning. Crawford the single. Aoki and Duffy back to back doubles. Here's Pagan who flied out his first time. Drops that breaking ball in there. It's a ball on a strike. You've got a base open. Good breaking ball that time. Stays right in the middle of the plate. Got a base open. You can afford to pitch Pagan carefully, but you still want to go after him. Make quality pitches around the edges. Keep the ball down. 
You don't want to have to face Buster with runners on base. Drives it to center. Pollock out there. Giants back to back RBI doubles. They lead it 2 1. creating runs in this series. I mentioned the Mark Trumbo triple in the ball game last night and with the infield playing back Jake Lamb just hit a ground ball to second base for an RBI. Tonight A.J. Pollock reached third base on the throwing air by the pitcher and then Chris Owings just hits a ground ball to the middle infielder to get A.J. on the plate. And here is Mark Trumbo to lead off the second. Mark Trumbo triples in his first two games this season. No Diamondbacks player has ever tripled in three straight games, let alone the first three games of a season. And the last big leaguer to hit triples in three consecutive games. Pittsburgh Starling Marte three seasons ago. And I heard Mark on the radio with Burns and Gambo this afternoon talking about his goal this year is to hit the ball in the air. When Mark Trumbo hits ground balls, he says it doesn't do anybody a whole lot of good. So his mission up there this season, get it up in the air and let it carry. He said he thought that triple he hit the other night on the opening night was a no-doubter. Just the rocket out there to right center. I was talking to a number of the Giants coaches about that opening game of the season. Uh, there were a number of balls hit in that game that they thought were going to leave the ballpark. Hmm. Goldie hit one to right field. There were several other hit to left center and straightaway center that seemingly should have left the ballpark. And they were saying it is a play bigger with the roof closed, with the roof open, and I pleaded dumb. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and, well, why would you know? <laughs> that was all up to the unit and Schilling, right? They got to choose? Yeah, sometimes mid-game. <laughs> Close it. Close the roof. Uh, the general consensus is that the ball carries much better with the roof and the panels open, especially when the weather's a little bit warmer. But, uh, you know, if you hit it well, it's going to leave regardless of roof panels open, closed. Makes no difference. If you square it up, uh, this is a good ballpark to hit it. A cool night here. Temps in the low 70s at first pitch. Not a whole lot of wind. Jake Lamb, seven RBIs. Understatement of the week. Jake Lamb said last night he's feeling comfortable at the plate right now. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Just trying to keep it going. Seven RBIs in the Diamondbacks' first two games, a club record. Just trying to get a good pitch and put a good swing on it. Stay within yourself. 
His swing does look considerably shorter here in the early going this season. There were times last year he'd get a little long, a little loopy with that swing and become susceptible to inside fastballs, but much quicker this year. Just hits a bullet up the middle, but right at Crawford. Even his outs are bullets. That's a double right there if it gets in the gap. Oh, yeah. Catcher number 18. Sends Brandon Crawford to his knees to make that play out there. That ball was slicing back toward him as he was moving to his left. Had to stop in his tracks to make that play. A big time hang with him for the second out. Four in a row retired by Heston. Make it five in a row, in fact. Here's Gerald Lair the start behind the plate, his D backs debut. Breaking ball in there for a strike. 0 1. Laird last year hit 204, 53 games with Atlanta. He's a career 244 hitter, over 12 major league seasons. Oh. It out to right field, right to Maxwell. So Chris Heston gets a 2-1 lead, works a 1-2-3 second. Oh boy, get it, get ready, Bob. Lolo's chicken and waffles. We're gonna put it in order when we come back. Lolo's, it doesn't matter because you get both. I'm Kate Longworth here at Chase Field coming at you from the main concourse behind section 141 at Lolo's Chicken and Waffles. And obviously the dining experience here at Chase Field has only gotten better this season. I mean, we're talking fried chicken and waffles. Nurses, Sue and Gina, you guys are here eating from Pittsburgh. What brought you to try Lolo's? The gentleman upstairs recommended food. We wanted some local food, and he said this was a local restaurant. So we said, okay, we'll try it. Yeah, that's exactly what the Diamondbacks are doing. They're bringing a lot of local favorite eateries here to the ballpark. And it's a pretty nice setup. Fried chicken, you get the spicy dipping sauce and maple syrup with your waffles. For the folks at home who are drooling right now, how's it taste? Fabulous. Could not be better. And I also heard they have some unique sides. They have some spicy corn fritters, some fried green tomatoes, mac and cheese. I mean, really, guys, does it get any better comfort food while watching America's pastime, you know? That's right, Kate. I tell you what, BB, if you're from Pittsburgh and you grew up eating Permanti Brothers and you're giving thumbs up to chicken and uh, waffles at Lolo's, that's, that's a pretty strong recommendation. I praise. Bennington throws out Posey. Take a look at the menu here. What's Dennis Lamb doing? Send him down. 
all the different uh, options that Kate talked about. Lolo's chicken and waffles, brand new here at the ballpark. I've been to Lolo's many times over in Scottsdale. I'm a Betty Boop guy. So one waffle, one chicken breast. Uh, they have a Betty Boop double D, which obviously is two parts chicken. Keep digging. <laughs> Casey McGee. The wife loves chicken and waffles. Cindy's all over Lolo. That's stop number one. Good stuff. Jeremy Ellickson we mentioned how important it is for him to get ahead in the count. He's thrown first pitch strikes down to 11 of 14. He's faced. But despite that he's. Uh, walked kind of a high wire act here through two innings. You could use a couple of quick outs here in the third to get that uh, pitch count uh, in a reasonable neighborhood. You, if you throw a lot of pitches in the first couple innings of the game, obviously uh, you need some short innings somewhere along the line to keep yourself in the ball game long enough to get a decision. So he got strike one to McGee, but now it's two balls and a strike. Very impressed uh, with Chris Heston, Bob. He's thrown strike one to all seven batters he's faced. Just a second big league start. Big cut there from McGee. Fourth in the National League in hits last year. They were looking for a nickname for Casey McGee, and they came up with Hits McGee. Hmm. Which is working out. Gets a lot of hits. Yanks that one down the left field line, but foul. Fans MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, celebrates 13 years. You can watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. You'll get real-time highlights, live look-ins, a pitch-tracking widget, and a whole lot more. For details, visit MLB.TV. There's the strikeout. Second strikeout for Hellickson, two down in the third. Oh, came with back to back changeups. The first one caught a little bit too much plate, and Casey McGee pulled it foul down that third baseline. This time he spots it perfectly at the knees on the outside corner to get strike three. And that's the second time they've got McGee to strike out by chasing a pitch down and away. It was a fastball in the first inning. Two down, here's Maxwell. Maxwell, most of last year, playing triple-A ball in Omaha in the Royals system. First pitch is fouled away. There's another strike one for Jeremy. Now, as you know, partner, I was next door in the booth talking to Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko, long-time broadcast partners for the Giants, about Justin Maxwell. They said he's got the best teeth in the National League. And he should because both of his parents are dentists. <laughs> and his father, as a matter of fact, has been the dentist to presidents. He was a dentist for uh, Bill Clinton as well as George Bush and... Uh, they said he's also Barack Obama's personal dentist. So how about that? Well, Maxwell was an excellent high school student in Maryland. He graduated with a 4-0 and was accepted to Harvard. But instead he went to the University of Maryland because he wanted to play big league baseball. And he said a lot of people around him were against the decision. I'm guessing mom and dad weren't thrilled. But it's worked out. Went to Maryland, played ball there, was a fourth round pick by the Nationals in 05. Parts of six big league seasons, a career 224 hitter. Plays off there, it's even two and two. I should point out that uh, both of his parents also served in his Navy. His father, 24 years, his mother, 20 years in the Navy. Wait, can you imagine being the dentist to the president? You better not feel any pain. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be feeling the pain. Oh, yeah. The Secret Service guys right there take care of that. Well, you could always use some of that uh, truth serum, find out some secrets. Uh -oh. Shortstop, right? I don't want to know. 
Got a two strike two out hit. Here's Crawford who singled and scored his first time up. Now five hits for the Giants. Yeah, watch the first pitch here. I mentioned Brandon Crawford's been very aggressive in this series. If he gets a strike on that first delivery, he likes to let it go. You were saying. Yeah. You know, partner, just because you're not in the starting lineup doesn't mean you can't help your teammates. That's Gregor Blanco, and obviously he's picked up something, or he thinks he has, on Jeremy Hellickson's delivery out of the stretch, and he was relaying that information to Brandon Crawford in the event Crawford gets on base or one of his other teammates gets on base. Maybe a way to try to get a little bit more of a jump. Uh, a lot of players do that on days they don't start. Watch that opposing pitcher. Watch the catcher. See if you can discern something that would give you a better chance of guessing what pitch is coming. Well, we've talked about with Jeremy. He's got a little bit of an unusual windup, and sometimes he slows and stops and starts again. Sometimes twice in his delivery, and that can create some issues when he's trying to hold runners. He thinks he has something over there. He's trying to convince Matt Duffy right now that uh, Hellickson is doing something consistently when he throws one pitch or the other, or when he's throwing to first or not throwing to first. It's one thing for one of your teammates to see it, but if you don't believe it, you better just play the game straight up. You start guessing along with something your teammate has seen, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Steve Finley was that way. I, I've told the story many times about Steve Finley against John Franco. Prime closer for the Mets. Finn said that when John Franco went into his set position out of the stretch, he could see the veins in his forearm stand out when he was going to throw a changeup. And he kept trying to convince Gonzo and Gracie and Reggie Sanders and all the other guys, and they would put their fingers in their ears. Nah, 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 nah. They didn't want to hear it. But for Steve Finley, he saw it and he believed it. The rest of the guys, uh, they just took their chances. It's another foul. That is a yep, foul ball. Looks like Blanca wants to time Hellickson now to the probably to the plate, right? Uh, you know, sometimes guys fall into a rhythm. They come into a set position, and if you're going home, you can count thousand one, thousand two, and deliver the ball. Thousand one, thousand two, deliver the ball. But if you're going to throw over to first base, maybe you only get to a thousand one, and then you turn and throw. Maybe he sets just a little bit longer on the changeup, trying to get that grip. Maybe he's a little quicker with the fastball out of the stretch position. 2 2 pitch. Drives it to center. AJ back it up. AJ Pollock. And he's got it. How about the Diamondback center fielder back, back, back against the wall, and he's got it. And Hellickson keeps it a 2-1 ball game. We'll talk to Mike Harkey coming up next.
today about a guy who ate a D bat dog and a churro dog in the same game. Whoa. Which seems impossible. She's literally got her hands full there with that thing. The double dog dare. That's uh, one double of the things at the ballpark. I double dog dare you. There you go. As they used to say in a Christmas story, right? Cliff Pennington leads off the Arizona third against Chris Heston. Penny getting the start at shortstop tonight. Nick Ahmed has the night off, at least for now, but we've seen Chip Hale use everybody he's got down on that bench. You know, it's very early in the going, obviously, but uh, I've been very impressed with Chip Hale and the way he's worked to get the matchups that he wants in the ball game, and he has not hesitated one time to pull the trigger and make the move necessary to get the advantage on the third base side of the field. And as a result, we were trying to figure it out. Two games in. I think everybody's played every position player, every relief pitcher. Yeah, with Gerald Laird getting the start tonight, uh, I think everybody has, uh, has gotten in the act. A little chilly in here, Bob, and a, you know, low 70s. I mean, we watched Joe Madden bundled up wearing a hat and mittens in Detroit and Chicago, but I, I dropped by the new team shop here. At Chase Field, got myself a little uh, Diamondback zip-up pullover, and they did a tremendous job in there. I mean, it is—it looks like it's twice as big. They got about seven, eight cast registers all in a row, so you're not, you're not waiting in line. They got a million hats, all kinds of stuff. You got Nike in there and Majestic, 47 brand, everything in there, all kinds of stuff. Bouncer to Duffy at second. And that's now seven straight set down by Chris Heston. I have to monitor my shopping expeditions down there to that team Major shop. Because I could walk out of there with bags of stuff. I mean, everything in there. they got the, the old throwback looking stuff. You know, looks a little weathered. If you like the newer look, if you like the straight build caps, if you like the fenders on the side of the bill, they got it all. I mean, it's so much bigger than it used to be. There's so much. The selection is so much more. All kinds of stuff. And then there's no waiting. There's a whole bunch of people waiting there to check you out. So you're you're in and out of there on game day, which is always nice. Here's a former American League pitcher, Jeremy Hellickson, his first National League at bat. Pride of Hoover High School in Des Moines, Iowa, the Huskies. <laughs> I believe he still makes his home in uh, in Des Moines. He was a great high school athlete there growing up in Des Moines, recruited in fact by the University of Iowa to play both baseball and basketball. Bounced over the mound, Crawford behind the bag at second. Two down. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. And I've got to admit, yeah, had a little Papa John's for lunch today. Took advantage of the D-backs 50 offer. We hit the trifecta last night, right? Oh, yeah. Tacos. The win, the uh, five runs, the homers. Mm -hmm. AJ Pollock was hit by a pitch and scored his first time up. I've been back still looking for their first hit, even though they have a run on the board. And Chris Heston has been effective so far. He's got a nice sinking fastball, comes in a smidge under 90 usually. And he will get a little more than his share of ground ball outs with it. Throws both a curveball and a slider. Relies heavily on the sinker, but throws both a curve and a slider. I think so far in this ball game, you could say he's been effectively wild. He plunked AJ, knocked Goldie off the plate. He's missed the strike zone by a wide margin from time to time, but then always seems to come back on the next pitch and put one right on the corner. Pulls the string on AJ Pollock and gets his second strikeout. The brand new, newly remodeled team shop here at Chase Field. We are through three D backs, trail at 2 1.
with the San Francisco Giants. And last night, the Diamondbacks got that elusive first win of the season under their belts. But it was a special night for Chip Hale, getting his first win as a big league manager. He had many friends and his family in attendance. And it was a special day for Chip with his players because after the victory and after the handshakes on the field, he went into the clubhouse and the team celebrated him. If you call this a celebration, guys, they threw him in a laundry basket, wheeled him into the shower room, and gave him a shower of beers. He was soaking when he met the media, but for Chip, he said it was special to be treated like they do the players when they have those special moments. And for the players, they said this one really takes the cake because normally you don't celebrate a manager in that way, and they were happy to be a part of his special moment. Well, when you get your first win, Bob, on National Beer Day, yeah, uh, seems apropos. By the convergence, that was uh, that was good. Hector Sanchez with a base hit to lead off the fourth, and once again, Ellickson has traffic around him on the bases. And a good move there by Paul Goldschmidt, just to, to reaffirm exactly what's going to happen here. Should Heston attempt to put down a sacrifice bunt, who's going to go where? See Jake Lamb creeping in at third. Goldie crashes in from first. And he yanks that foul down the third baseline. Gary Schiffman there to pounce on it. Our Golden Glover down the left field line. Ernie Ned has manned right field. There's Roberto Kelly, the third base coach. Do you get anything for your first managerial win? Do they uh well, nothing like that. No, no. Put the lineup card hanging on the wall at home, or will have soon. <laughs> That's big news on the Brenly front. Yeah, we're back in the old ranch. The renovations are complete. <laughs> Alex in one more time. That fields his position very well, despite the error in the first. And Heston moves Sanchez along, one out. Left fielder Nori Aoki. Paradise Valley Burger Company brand new here at the ballpark along with Lolo's chicken and waffles and so many other of our food vendors here all going Local at the ballpark you get a real taste of the valley here at chase in 2015 Top of the order Nori Aoki who's been aboard twice a single a double he's driven in a run and scored a run Gerald Laird. This guy, Bob, is just the ultimate backup catcher. He's accepted the role. I mean, a lot of times uh, you get a young player coming up through the minor league system, gets to the major leagues, and wants to be a starting player. And uh, when he's not able to assume a starting role with the ball club, uh, he can become a cancer on the team. But guys like Gerald Laird, uh, you know, playing behind Yachty or Molina, he realizes he wasn't going to play every day, but so he, his mindset was be the best backup catcher in the big leagues. Big favorite of Tony La Russa's when he played in St. Louis. Big favorite of every pitching staff he's ever caught. As a member of Tony's World Series champion 2011 Cardinals, was on the Tigers the following year when they went to the World Series and lost to these Giants. Ellickson behind, two balls and no strikes. Here is the chief baseball officer. That's been a familiar sight throughout spring training in the first three games of the regular season. Tony Russo taking notes. Sees something on nearly every pitch of the ball game, and more often than not, he'll make a little note to himself to talk to the appropriate player or coach after the ball game and address whatever it is that he saw happen down on the field. Up there with the new director of analytics, that's Dr. Ed Lewis in the blue shirt standing behind Tony. John Watson, Dave Stewart. Full house up there. Second walk issued by Hellickson. Here's Matt Duffy. An RBI double his last time up. It like, might take more than a single to score Hector Sanchez from second base uh, <laughs> on that sacrifice bunt by the pitcher Heston. Uh, he was actually on the move. The Giants had started Sanchez breaking toward second base as the pitcher put down the bunt. 
I think Bruce Bochy figured even on a good bunt, they've got a chance to get the lead runner in Sanchez. So uh, to try to combat that, he got him in motion. Big swing and a miss there. No balls and two strikes. The Duff man, Matt Duffy. That's the end of his bat handle. He's got a Simpsons character on there. <laughs> These kids. These kids nowadays. That's pretty good. Of course, I guess it's better than Billy Ripken's baseball card. Yeah, that didn't work ago. out too well. Not too well. Jake Lamb at third. Gets up and can't throw Duffy out. The Giants have the bases loaded. But Jake there kept it in the infield, prevented any chance of a run coming in. And Hellickson, who got out of a bases loaded jam in the first, has another one here in the fourth. Yeah, that in and of itself, just knocking that ball down, keeping it out of that left field corner when the Giants really would have had some action. You knock it down, keep it on the infield. You still have the double play in order with one out in the inning. Mike Harkey. He had hoped to talk to Mike during the last half inning, but as you can see, he's got his hands full here. With Hellickson now at 70 pitches, only 45 for strikes. With him stirs Daniel Hudson. So the Giants have Hector Sanchez, the catcher, at third base. Aoki, the leadoff man at second, and Duffy with very good speed. He's an excellent base runner. At first, they're loaded one out for Pagan, who is 0 for 2. He has fly out twice. There's strike one, critical for Jeremy. Seventeen of twenty one first pitch strikes for Hellickson tonight. He has walked two, he struck out two. Giants have seven hits. Spring didn't get off to a great start when Angel Pagan was sidelined early with some neck pain. And then the back flared up again. That gave him so much trouble last year. Wound up needing two injections this spring. He had back surgery last September. And he sure looks healthy here in this series. The 0 2. Coming home. The throw almost pulls Laird off the plate, but he keeps the foot down for the force on Sanchez. Nice play there by Gerald Laird. Actually, on that play, Gerald Laird turned into the first baseman. Got that foot on the plate. Had to stretch into foul territory and keep that toe on the plate long enough to get the force out at home plate. That particular ground ball, had it been hit to Goldie's right, leading him toward a throw to second base, he might try to turn two up the middle of the field, but I don't think he thought he could get two, so he wanted to make sure to keep that run off the plate. They're loaded with two outs for Buster Posey. He has walked and grounded out 0 for 1. A.J. Pollock in center field will shade Posey over toward right center, so a big gap in left center for the Giants first baseman tonight.
Oki at third, Duffy at second, Pagan at first. A ball and a strike. Posey coming off a three hit night last night, including a two run homer. This was Buster Posey against Ruby De La Rosa, first inning. Ball oh, moved down and in. Buster just had to drop the head on it. Yeah, Hellickson's been using his fastball a lot to the last two hitters here. Attack Pagan with fastball. So far, all fastballs to Posey in this at bat. Yeah. Right to Goldie. And for the second time in the ball game, Jeremy Hellickson leaves the bases loaded. They'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Still a 2 1 ball game. Terribly efficient, obviously, but twice he's left the bases loaded and gotten out of there without giving up a run. Your thoughts? Well, that's that's all I can ask for. I mean, uh, he could have easily given up four or five runs. He's he's battling his buns off right now, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty pleased that it's only two to one. Chris Owings leads off the D-backs for it. First start of the season for Jeremy, a regular season, Mike, and uh, any kind of limitations on pitch count or anything like that. He really had to labor hard to get through those first two. Yeah, but uh, you know what? He's got to go back out there and try to give us at least 100 pitches and uh, see where it takes us. Um, after the fifth inning, we'll see where he's where he's at, and uh, we hopefully we can just get this next one out of the way and then make a decision after that because we do have an off day tomorrow. Try and keep this thing going. Hart, thanks very much. You got it, guys. Mike Harkey, the D-backs pitching coach. Meantime, boy, Chris Heston. And Owings bounces one to Duffy at second, has now retired Bob 10 in a row. He's yet to give up a hit. He's given up some hard hit balls, but unfortunately for the Diamondbacks, right at Giants defenders. He's settled in a little bit. He's got a better feel for that breaking ball now, especially that short, sharp slider that he throws. Still spraying that fastball around a little bit, but as I mentioned an inning ago, uh, you have to call it effectively wild when one pitch is at your shoulder and the next one's right on the outside corner at the knees. It's tough to dig in and take a good swing. And he struck out Goldie looking his first time up. Yeah, Heston hit A.J. Pollock, the first batter of the ball game for the D-backs, and then A.J. went to third on a Heston throwing error. And ever since then, he's retired 10 straight. Hello. Whoops. Lady. <laughs> and 
The old Jerry Lewis line. Yeah, we can laugh about it because he looks to be okay out there, but a little bit of a dangerous situation. Caught that back cleat on his left foot and all his momentum was carrying him toward home plate. Just spiked that ball in the grass about 10, 15 feet in front of the mound. Like he caught that front heel on the yep. dirt. Appears to be none the worse for wear. Might make a few highlight reels though. Goldie lays off. It's two balls and a strike. Well, every pitcher's done that at some point in their career. It's very embarrassing. We just hope you don't hurt yourself. We hope you don't hit anybody in the head or something as the ball comes flying out of your hand. Weston, as we mentioned, had a pretty good spring in the Cactus League. And he's carried that over here to just his second big league start. He walks Goldie with one out. Hey fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. I believe you're acquainted with uh, that trophy. Yes, indeed. Thing of beauty. Man. Get used to seeing that purple. We're going to see a lot of purple this year. Throwback Thursday. Yeah. Every Thursday home game. We're off uh, the first Thursday. That's tomorrow. Here's Peralta. And every Thursday home game will be Throwback Thursdays as the purple and teal makes its return. I mentioned that Heston has carried over his success from spring training into this start. Made. Uh, Five appearances in the Cactus League for the Giants. Two starts. Went 1 0, a 2 4 0 ERA. 15 innings, gave up only 10 hits and had 10 strikeouts. I know you want to mark it on your calendar. May 7th against the Padres will be the first throwback Thursday here at home. And I'm told uh, by people way up top, mm -hmm. I mean, I went right to the top on this, that you and I will have purple shirts for the nice. Yeah, kind of excited about that. 2-0 to Peralta. Spanks it into center. He backs out a pair of one-out base runners. And here comes Mark Trumbo. That's the first hit for the Diamondbacks. David picking right up where he left off last season. Man, he just looks so comfortable at the plate. Sees the ball so well. Catches it out in front of home plate. Little slicing line drive into center field for the first hit of the game for the D-backs. Really like as we talked about in the open about how those left-hand bats would be critical. The heart of this order, Bob, has a nice flow to it. You've got right, left, right, left with Goldie, Peralta, Trombo, Lamb. Every one of them is dangerous. Mark rounded out to short his first time. You just hope the guys at the top of the order tonight, AJ Pollock and Chris Owens, at other times, Ender Inciarte will be up there at the top of the order. If those guys can get on base at any kind of a normal clip, there should be a lot of RBI opportunities for the guys in the middle this year. And this guy is an RBI machine. Even when he's hurt. As he was last year. There's a strike. Quickly 0-2. Dropped that, it in there. Yeah, that Heston slider. He's kind of found a feel for that pitch. He's able to throw it for strikes. Start it right at the right-handed hitter. Break it over the inside part of the plate. Or start it over the heart of the plate and break it off low and away. Be a good time to get that third straight triple. Gets it up in the air along the right field line. Maxwell watches it go in the seats. Another pitch up in the zone. It's very apparent that this book on Mark Trumbo, as far as the Giants pitching staff is concerned, is to try to rush him upstairs with fastballs. You see Sanchez rise up out of his crouch. Trumbo tries to get up on top of that pitch, fouls it down that right field line. But we've seen every pitcher in this series that faced Mark Trumbo attack him with some high pitches. He does go after them almost all the time. 
We saw that first triple Monday night. That was about shoulder height. Almost drove it out of here to right center. Case of the off speed pitch there, and that's the third strikeout for Heston. Two down. Usually when you throw that high fastball, it's designed to set up the next pitch, and that time he came right back with that slider that's been his go-to pitch for the last couple of innings to get strike three. Well, here's the RBI man and an RBI spot. Jake Lamb with two outs and two on. Jake Lamb was first called up to the big leagues last August. He understandably looked like he was trying to find his footing a little bit. Struck out 27 times in his first 68 major league at bats. But now, as he looks back, he admitted, you know, it didn't quite feel right last year. It was kind of a battle almost as soon as he got here. But now much more comfortable, much more at home. And that means on the field, in the clubhouse, I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. Once you get over that phenomenon of facing a guy's bubblegum card, you know, you realize he's just another pitcher. He's got to throw strikes. If I swing at strikes, get a good pitch to hit, put a good swing on it. You know, all those things. Once you realize that this is the same game I've always played, it's things I've always done, I can do this. And then it really translates into the swing. You talked about Bob how he was a little long last year and now seems to be a little quicker to the ball. But to, he's in a place now, obviously, as we've seen through two games, where he's comfortable with that swing. And now he says it's just a matter of maintaining that. Marino. And he said the thing he was most proud of last night on the that long at bat which was just a tremendous at bat on the home run was the fact that he fought off so many pitches and stayed alive and stayed alive up there he works a walk so the bases are loaded with two down and Heston in a jam here will work to Gerald Laird and Hellickson has twice had the bases loaded with one out and gotten out of the mess without a run. And now Heston's in a two out bases loaded jam. First at bat in the game, Jared Laird saw back to back sliders to start the sequence. That was the third out back in the second inning. See if he attacks him the same way here with two outs and the bases loaded. He flying out to right his first time. Off the fist, foul ground. And Posey has it. And Heston wiggles off the hook. We are through four. D back still trail 2 1.
coming in. Friday, you'll enjoy a post-game fireworks celebration courtesy of Gila River Casinos. Saturday, get a Hello Kitty bobblehead. And then on Sunday, come early for Los d Fiesta de la Familia, a pregame multicultural street event presented by Fry's. Get your tickets online at dbacks.com. Got the Hello Kitty bobblehead up here, in fact. It's not a bad item. First giveaway of the season. Fifth inning now. McGee, Maxwell, Crawford, 5, 6, and 7 for San Francisco. They have out hit the Diamondbacks 7-1 and lead it 2-1. McGee has struck out twice. Both times, remember, they got Casey McGee to strike out by chasing balls down and away out of the zone. He's up there hacking against Hellickson. I got him out low and away after a series of pitches right inside on his hands. And we mentioned in his first at bat of this game, McGee has had a real hard time laying off those pitches inside off the plate. This is another change up here. Front once again. Well, ideally, you throw such a good change up that the guy swings and misses, but. Invariably, he's going to pull it foul either down the third baseline for a righty or down the first baseline for a lefty because your bat just gets out there so quickly out in front of the ball, it's very tough to keep it fair. This guy used to be a dead pole hitter. He's always up there looking to pull the ball for a home run, went to Japan and really used or learned how to use the whole field there. He's off that time. They tried the same formula, but McGee's not biting. It's two and two. He said in Japan, you got to use the whole field. There's a lot of different pitches, movement, change of speeds, different from the power pitchers in the U.S. Really helped him become a better overall hitter. And he laces that by a diving lamb at third. Pennington way over there to chase it. And McGee has a leadoff double. That's the eighth hit for the Giants. One more change up. That time he was able to extend his swing, kind of reach out there and keep the bat in the strike zone just long enough to keep that ball fair down the third baseline. Daniel Hudson had been warming earlier. We heard Mike Harkey tell us a half inning ago that they really want to get Helix into 100 pitches. And he's at 83 right now. Trying to get some length. De La Rosa last night, five and a third. Josh Colmenter Monday night, four and two third. Gotta have these guys get a little deeper into games and take some heat off that bullpen. And for Hellickson, it's been the first guy in the inning. It's been trouble. Four of the five leadoff men for the Giants have reached base so far. Maxwell singled his last time up. that when Hellickson was in Tampa Bay as pitching coach there, one of the best in the business, Jim Hickey, used to really kind of get on him to be more aggressive and attack the hitter, pitch in the strike zone more. He would tell him all the time, you need to stick the ball in the strike zone, you need to pitch to contact and make them hit the ball. And he tries to live around the edges and even when he throws strike one, this is a great case in point. He, he manages to fall behind two and one, three and one. And that drives the pitch count up there. And sure enough, he gets a, near the end of the fifth inning or in the fifth inning, and it's at or about 100 pitches. And then the bullpen's busy and the whole thing. So trying to get Jeremy to be a little more aggressive in the zone. Second base, Chris Owens has it. And McGee's in at third. So 
So Maxwell moves the runner along. And Jeremy Hellickson reminds me a little bit of a guy that pitched for multiple teams in the big leagues and had a measure of success. Uh, Rich Harden had a good fastball, maybe a little more fastball than Hellickson has, but really relied a lot on a straight changeup. And he too would run up some enormous pitch counts early in the ball game and rarely was around in the fifth inning to, to be involved in a decision. I mean, he might only pitch four and two thirds, but he'd strike out 12 guys. <laughs> Brandon Crawford singled and scored in the second. And a deep fly ball to the center field wall that A.J. Pollock made a terrific catch on. That was to win the third. Jim Hickey in Tampa Bay was quoted last October as saying that he thought Helkson nitpicks a lot, tries to stay perfect and gets into a lot of deep counts and I think we've Seen that tonight here. That's a foul ball. And the Rays in Tampa, they said that, you know, they were willing to accept those occasions where once every eh, five, six, maybe seven, eight outings, Hellickson might end up getting hit pretty hard just because he would try to go in the strike zone like they asked. And with his stuff, they insisted he wasn't going to overmatch anybody. And they would say that's the kind of pitcher you have to be more economical working to contact more often. I think especially after Jeremy sees uh, the ballpark down in San Diego up in San Francisco Dodger Stadium at night great places to pitch to contact. Oh, do it! Base hit for Crawford. McGee scores it's 3-1. Crawford he's two for three Chip Hale yeah, he has checked in here with Rob Drake so they are going to make a double switch at this point and bring Daniel Hudson into the ball game I think the double switch will involve Tuffy Gosowicz coming in for Gerald Laird the pitcher will hit Laird's spot Tuffy will hit the pitcher spot now Laird is walking back into the dugout with all his gear on and Hellickson is right behind him back in a moment. Dodgers series gets underway here. Game one coverage starts at 6 o'clock Friday with Diamondbacks Live pregame show on Fox Sports Arizona Plus. If you need a complete listing of the plus channels, visit FoxSportsArizona.com. That is Anderson versus Anderson. Brett and Chase. Well, we go to the bullpen here through four and a third. Jeremy Hellickson Bob through 20 of 25 first pitch strikes but managed to throw 91 pitches through four and a third and so you've got a whole new battery here after the double switch. Hellickson out and Laird out. 
Hudson on the mound and Jordan Pacheco behind the plate. I assumed it would be Tuffy Gosowicz, but uh, Jordan Pacheco takes over behind the dish. This is that versatility that uh, will serve the Diamondbacks and Jordan well. Bring him into the ball game as part of a double switch behind the plate. You can bring him in at multiple positions in a part of a double switch. So Crawford is the runner at first. One out here, Sanchez, who singled his last time up against Jeremy Hellickson. Buddy comes in, throws 95, gets strike one. Deal out of Ruby De La Rosa being wedged in between Josh Colmenter and Jeremy Hellickson because he had a little more fastball. Give the opposing team a different look. He, Chip Hale didn't want Josh Colmenter followed by a guy that threw exactly like he did, so they put Ruby De La Rosa in between. And the same thing goes for an individual ball game. You start with a guy that throws a lot of straight changeups. His fastball is 88 to 90. And follow him with a guy out of the pen throwing 95 to 97 miles an hour. Sometimes you Start a righty, bring in a left-handed reliever, or vice versa. Start a lefty, bring in a righty, just to try to give that opposing offense a completely different look. 0 oh and 2 to Sanchez. And that's been one of the encouraging things about the return of Daniel Hudson. That velocity has been outstanding. Really is consistently 95 to 97 after two Tommy John surgeries. I always thought Bob of well, they ruled that Sanchez went around so he gets the strikeout. Well, That's what we were talking about Josh Coleman who started uh, opening hey, night here at Chase Field up. topped out at 87 miles per hour on his best heater of the evening. Ruby De La Rosa 97 with his best hit heater on the uh, game two. And then as we've documented tonight, Jeremy Hellickson, 88 to 90, 91 maybe with his fastball, but a lot of changes. Heston, first pitch swing, right back to the mound. So Daniel Hudson comes in, gets two quick outs. Giants, though, add a run. They lead it 3-1. Interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Get yourself a signed Kachinko game piece. Bottom five here at Chase, only one hit for the D backs. Rookie Chris Heston, his second big league start in place of Matt Kane, who went on the DL yesterday. Retired at 1.10 straight. 
And he's been very good, although he had two walks and a single in the fourth. Managed to leave the bases loaded. And Pennington leads off the fifth. Family fun here at Chase Field. Look, she's she's like three years old and she's already lost in the phone texting. <laughs> Sixty pitches for Heston, thirty-four strikes. She was probably asking her dad what Steve's Twitter handle is. So Look at that! Huh? Shout, yeah. At Bert Ebex. Gotta get you on there. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, you're back there in the in the new renovated estate. Sit back in the Barca lounger and. Look at the trophies on the walls and just start tweeting. Well, I can think of other things I would rather do. I'd like to save your fingers for the guitars. Yeah, I think, huh? yeah. There we go. Penny laces one down the right field line. That's in the corner. Maxwell fields it off the carom and Cliff Pennington has a leadoff double. It starts at the bottom of the fifth inning. Penny gets a fastball belt high inside part of the plate, hooks it down into that right field corner. And we mentioned that when Daniel Hudson came into the ball game along with Jordan Pacheco, a double switch, and this is why you do it. This is the pitcher spot due up right now. Jeremy Hellickson was hitting in this spot, but when you bring two players into the game at the same time, you can flip their spot in the order with the two players that they are replacing. So Jordan Pacheco batting now in what was the pitcher spot. And he has put together a tremendous record as a pinch hitter. And he's done that by being very aggressive early in the count. And he swings at the first pitch, sure enough. Heston bobbles it, recovers, looks Pennington back to the bag, and throws out Pacheco. And up AJ Pollock, the leadoff man. Pool. <laughs> a lot of great areas here in this ballpark just to come and hang out. AJ struck out his last time up. He was hit by a pitch and scored a run. Back in the first, there's a strike. Think that Chris Heston, two days shy of his 27th birthday, just his second big league start. So far, they have to be very pleased with what they've got from this guy. This one is over the line. Duffy at second. Pennington in at third. Well, while we have a moment, let's take a look at this day in Major League Baseball history brought to you by Geico. Hank Aaron hits home run number 17 to pass Babe Ruth for the all time home run lead. Hammer and Hank had homered on opening day of 1974 against the Cincinnati Reds to tie the record and broke it in Atlanta's home opener against left hander Al Downing. Chris Owens looking for his first hit of 2015. He did drive in the Diamondbacks only run of the game with an RBI ground out in the first. Stop that time by Sanchez. You can see him tapping his glove on the ground, trying to encourage his young pitcher to make sure you throw this slider down low and away, and that's exactly where he puts it. If you ask for it down there, you better block it. 
It would have been a good time to have Heston throw one to the backstop. Mm -hmm. Pennington in third, down two runs. Settle down. Andy Green coaching at third. Sanchez, like a lot of catchers nowadays, uh, paints those fingernails so the pitcher can see a little better. I think that's called buttered popcorn if you go to your local salon. The color, you mean? Yeah. And how would you know that exactly? <laughs> Is that why you can't tweet? That's right. <laughs> Don't want to mess up the manicure. Well, obviously the best lighting you can get to play baseball uh, at night, but uh, you know for the catcher you got the batter there the umpire behind you trying to give signs down there between the wickets and uh, sometimes it's tough to see in those shadows and Chris Owing strikes out Eston strands the runner at third and through five. It's a 3 1 ball game. Is brought to you in part by your Valley Honda dealers, where you'll get more standard features for less money. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Mix One, greatness in, greatness out. Now available at your local fries. If you're young Chris Weston, uh, you better listen to this guy, Dave Rigetti, the longest tenured pitching coach in the major leagues. His 16th season with the San Francisco Giants as a pitching coach. He knows a little bit about the game. Oh, okay, leads off the sixth. He's been aboard all three times he's been up there. A single, a double, a walk. He's got an RBI. He scored a run. Talk about the success and long term success of a franchise, and obviously the Giants' three World Series championships over a five year period. and. Anytime it seems Bobby have a run like that in any sport. The one common thread is stability. Ownership. Coaching staff. Some core players. Whether it's the Patriots or the Giants. It's always the same group of guys over the years and that's certainly the case in San Francisco. Brian Sabian. Oh, he spins around like a top at that one two and two. That many moving parts, it's not always pretty when you get fooled. It's hard to get everything to stop at the same <laughs> yeah. time. Norichka Aoki. 
33 years old. His fourth year in the big leagues. He was a very good player in Japan. He played eight seasons for the Yakult Swallows of the Central League and was a career 329 hitter there. Signed with the Giants in January. And he's kind of got that pesky vibe about him. He'll spoil some good pitches and stay alive up there. Talking about that consistency within an organization, the Braves had it for years and years with Bobby Cox and John Sheerholtz down there, and the staff that they carried with them. And the Giants have a similar situation. Brian Sabian, 18 years, the longest tenured general manager. His assistant GM Dick Tidro, one of the great nicknames of all time, Dirt. <laughs> 22 years with the organization. Bruce Bochy, 20 years. Right to Chris Owens in second for an easy out. You mentioned Dave Rigetti, 16 years. Ron Wotus, a bench coach, 17 years. Well, there's something to be said for that consistency. You know what you're going to get every spring training. You know what you're going to get throughout the season. And more often than not recently, you know what you're going to get in the postseason. No team has repeated as World Series champion since the Yankees won three straight from 1998 to 2000. And you look at that team with Torrey and Zimmer in the front office there. And that famous Yankee core four group of players. Duffy skies this one to left center field. They're big Jeremy Hellickson fans. Two down for Angel Pagan. Who somehow is hitless tonight. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. He's got a 13 game hitting streak going against the Diamondbacks. 10 RBIs over that stretch. And we've seen in this series what. Having a healthy Pagan in this lineup means to the Giants. Missed a lot of playing time to injuries the last couple of years. He's only played in 167 games the last two seasons, and a lot of that he was playing hurt. Two years ago, needed hamstring surgery, played only 71 games. Last year, needed surgery to fix that bulging disc in his back. I told him he had to have it. Said if you don't have this operation on your back, you might have neurological damage down the road. They tried epidural injections, trying to get him through the season. That just didn't work, and finally had to go under the knife. Came back in early August, but had to be shut down in late September. Did not play in the postseason last year. He's got a base hit. Just able to keep that one fair down the left field line, a two out double. And it's four doubles now for the Giants, 10 hits. Well, Pagan, one guy that's really glad to see Hellickson out of the ball game. He doesn't have to worry about a lot of off speed pitches from Daniel Hudson. He's always been a real good fastball hitter, and that time got a Daniel Hudson fastball out over the plate and just shot it down that left field line. RBI chance for Buster Posey. Well, Pagan has had now at least one double in every game of this series. He had two in Monday's opener. A ball and a strike. Oh, 
Diamondbacks will have the heart of the order in the home half of the sixth. Goldschmidt, Peralta, Trumbo, three, four, and five. This is driven to left center field. Nice running catch there by David Peralta, and they scram the two out double. Here's what's next, brought to you by CenturyLink. Goldie leads it off. Starters not going that deep into games. Bullpen gets a lot of work. They've been good so far. Daniel Hudson got it done in that last inning. He sure did. Once again, they're in a tight game. Hopefully they can keep it right there. Hopefully those Diamondback bats get into gear. Well, speaking of that, heart of the order coming up. Guys, we'll send it back over to you. There's a little bit of a trend right now. Starters not going that deep into games. Bullpen gets a lot of work. They've been good so far. Daniel Hudson got it done in that last inning. He sure did. Once again, they're in a tight game. Hopefully they can keep it right there. Hopefully those Diamondback bats get into gear. Well, speaking of that, heart of the order coming up, guys. We'll send it back over to you. Thank you, Jody and Joe. And you're right, guys. Time to get this thing going against rookie Chris Heston in just his second major league start. Diamondbacks so far have only two hits. They trail it 3-1. Good job there by Daniel Hudson as Randall Delgado will now start throwing in the Diamondback bullpen. Goldie Peralta Trumbo 3-4 and 5 in the Arizona 6. Goldie has struck out and walked 0 for 1. Yeah, after that double switch in the fifth inning, the pitcher spot is due up fifth here and Optimistically, Chip Hale gets his bullpen going, hoping that that pitcher spot comes up. How many moves or batters ahead do you have to be as a manager? You always have to be looking off in the distance, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and some of it is wishful thinking. You know, you look at the opposing lineup and you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Well, if we get, you know, if we. Goldie drives it to right. That is off the wall. Maxwell picks it up. Goldschmidt stops at second, a leadoff double. Well, he said, got to get it started. These are the guys to do it. Good start so far. A real good start. Just didn't get enough air underneath that ball. A line drive to right field on a fastball right down the middle of the plate. Looked like it had a chance to sneak over that yellow line on top of the fence in right field, but just hit it too hard. Well, gave it a pretty good effort out there. Comes up empty. Fortunately for the Giants, the ball didn't get far away. Goldie has to pull up at second base with a double. So the leadoff man in scoring position. Here's David Peralta, who singled his last time up. He's one for two. Just the third D-backs hit tonight against rookie Chris Heston. Chip Hale talking about one of the things he most liked about David Peralta's game last night it wasn't the long home run he hit. It was the fact that he walked twice. And 
Chip said he put Peralta in that cleanup spot, and he's back in there tonight to break up that Diamondback right-hand power duo of Goldie and Trumbo. And David says he's not really trying to think too much about being the cleanup guy, not getting caught up in all that stuff. Just kind of trying to be the same guy he's always been. That's one thing I never really got a handle on. You, know, you hit a guy in the four spot and suddenly he thinks he has to be a power hitter. You hit a guy in the leadoff spot and suddenly he thinks he needs to bunt and take pitches. And, I mean, you be the hitter you are, whether you're hitting third or eighth, it doesn't matter. It's the same approach. The situation will dictate what your approach should be, but as far as seeing ball, hit ball, that should be the same no matter where you hit in the lineup. And he's off that one. Two balls and two strikes now. Well, you can see how some guys might be affected by that mentality. Oh, I'm the cleanup guy. Now I got to start swinging for the fences every time. Oh, we've seen plenty of that. No, no question about it. Well, Dave Stewart did say this offseason that ideally the Diamondbacks would find a middle of the order left handed bat because they were right hand heavy at one point. And we'll see if that guy ends up being David Peralta. It might be. Goldie will move up 90 feet. It's a little farther inside than Sanchez wanted it, but uh, he really clanked that one, hit off the thumb of his glove, went to the backstop, allowing Goldie to advance on to third base with nobody out. Full count to Peralta. Look at the lead gold he's getting at third base. Jeez. Looks like Jackie Robinson. He's halfway down the line. <laughs> David stays alive. Yeah, with Casey McGee playing well off the line down there at third base, Goldie can get as much lead as Casey McGee is off the base defensively. Well, he was almost halfway down the line that time. Yeah, you can see how much room uh, or how far Casey McGee is away from the bag at third, so Goldie can take at least that much of a lead. Has to now at 80 pitches. I mean, you have a catcher that uh, has hard hands behind home plate. Uh, you could possibly score without a base hit here. And it hangs on to the foul tip. It looked like that time, and that's the first out. Right field. Seen a lot of straight changeups from Heston in this ball game. Uh, usually, when he goes to off-speed pitches, it's that hard slider. But uh, that time, a real nice straight changeup got David way out in front. Five strikeouts now. Here's Mark Trumbo. Mark has said he's trying to lift the ball up in the air every time he's up there this year. If he can do that here, he can drive in a run. Machi, the right-hander, FL to lefty. Mark tonight has grounded out and struck out over two. That time came up empty. The ball was up around belt high. Bounce down the line right to Andy Green. See, Bob, that they got the coaches those helmets that you like so much now. Yeah, Dave McCabe was wearing the uh, shiny one the other day, but now they've got the Matt Sedona red helmets. I like those. I think that's a must have purchase. 
for all the D-backs fans. Now we just got to get our Golden Glovers those yeah. new helmets. No, the cages. Two balls and two strikes to Trumbo. Goldie at third. That one gets behind Sanchez, and here comes Goldschmidt. He will score. Well, Heston almost did that early in the ball game when the Diamondbacks had a runner at third, and that time he brings in a run. The second wild pitch in this inning. Sanchez a little tough with the hands back there. It looked like it could have been a pass ball. He just kind of reached across his body and uh, didn't catch the pitch. Well, he had to shorten up his lead a little bit that time because McGee was closer to the bag at third, but still scores easily as that ball got away. Lucky to align with Heston there. In the meantime, it's a full count to Trumbo. Chopped over the mound. Crawford charges. And throws him out. Well, here's Jake Lamb saying he feels more confident at the plate this year. And assistant hitting coach Mark Grace agrees. This guy's got a world of talent. Uh, now he's now he's got a world of confidence, and uh, so you, you you put those two things together, it makes a pretty dangerous baseball player, and that's what he's become. Uh, I think the confidence that he won the job coming out of spring training. Uh, I think that's what he did in spring training more than anything. He worked on he worked on what he's good at. He worked on his strengths, but he also I think. Mentally, he, he came out on top in the third base job, and I think that's, uh, like I said, that makes for a dangerous baseball player when he's confident like that. Well, I'd say seven RBIs in the first two games is pretty dangerous, a new D-backs record. After the double switch, as Bob mentioned earlier, the pitcher spot is due up next, and Aaron Hill is in the on-deck circle. Can you tell as the manager when a guy's walking around feeling a little more confident, a young guy like this? Oh, yeah. You can tell by the body language, a little bit more spring in their step. I mentioned it the other night. I love to look at a guy's face. Is he showing any tension or stress in his face? Sky foul ground, third base side. And Casey McGee has it. Diamondbacks get one back, and through six, they trail it 3 2.
birthday is Friday. This is just his second big league start in there for the injured Matt Kane and Bob. He did a tremendous job for the Giants. A little erratic in the early going. His defense made some big plays behind him to get him out of some trouble. But uh, Bruce Bochy's got to be very happy with what he got out of the youngster tonight, uh, given the state of their starting rotation. Yeah, he'll be 27 on Friday, just his second major league start. Right now, he's in line for the win. The Diamondbacks trail at 3-2. Our Gila River game summary. And Nori Aoki has been aboard three times. Giants got two in the second half. The Diamondbacks scored a run without a hit against Heston in the first. He retired the next 10 he faced after that. It was 3-1 San Francisco. D-backs just got one back after the Goldie double. And now Randall Delgado is out there to start the seventh in a 3-2 ball game. We saw Randall last night. Pitched one inning, gave up the hit, had a strikeout, 18 pitches. He worked the seventh, and he's back out there in the seventh here. And what turned out to be, in effect, a 1 2 3 inning. He did give up the single to Buster Posey, but Tuffy picked him off first base. Yeah. Casey McGee doubled and scored his last time. Speaking of Jake Lamb feeling more comfortable and settling in, I, you can definitely say the same for Randall Delgado in this role coming out of the bullpen. He's a little bigger this year, 6'4", 220 now. He's 25 years old. You forget that he's still so young. But, uh, he's a big guy out there, and he's throwing hard. Well, sometimes that confidence comes after you've had, I don't know if I would call it failure, but Randall was competing for that number five starter job in uh, spring training last year. That one at 94 is on the ground a second. CO spins and throws it out. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, for a lot of guys that have had nothing but success in high school or college or throughout the minor leagues, uh, the, the first time you bump up against some adversity, it does rattle your confidence a little bit. But uh, once you realize, like I was talking about with Jake Lamb earlier, that I know I can do this, I've done it before, I can do it again, yeah, you, you start to see it, uh, the way they approach their game, the way they carry themselves, the things they expect of themselves. Well, there's Heston in the giant dugout. Here's Maxwell at the plates. He's singled in the third. He's one for three. Well, it was for Randall last year something of an up-and-down season. Go back to June. He was just outstanding last June. A ERA for the month of .64. And he was dominant down the stretch in September. A 1.53 ERA for the season's final month last year. Including two starts. But then was wrapped around a difficult August. His ERA in August was 11 and a half. So it was very much for Randall hit or miss last year. He had a very good spring training. Maxwell gets that up in the air. Sends Peralta to the wall. Whew. Well, Delgado used every foot of ballpark he had on that one. Just a long, loud out. Fastball inside. Maxwell got it high in the air, but... David never took his eye off that ball, tracks it right back to the barrier. Towards the Giants like Maxwell as a right hand power bat. He's got some pop. Just missed one there. On a cool night here at Chase. Two down now for Crawford. Single and scored in the second. An RBI single in the fifth. He looks at strike one. That is Buff. The churro dough. Mm. And that is the new sensation. Sky to shallow center. Pollock coming in. And Randall Delgado gets a scare, but he works a 1 2 3 7. The churro dog. Only at Chase Field in downtown Phoenix.
you in part by Tire Pro. For the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit one of the 22 locally owned Arizona Tire Pros locations. And by Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. The D-Bat Dog here at Chase Field. Bottom seven, Chris Heston's night has ended. The pitcher spot due to lead off the getting for the Diamondbacks. And so Bruce Bochy waited until Aaron Hill was announced as the pinch hitter. So Hill will hit for the pitcher. And there's a new pitcher coming in for the Giants back after this. For San Francisco. header the Red Sox take on the Yankees in the Bronx followed by a playoff rematch as the Royals battle Mike Trout and the Angels coverage begins Saturday 9 30 a.m. on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go new pitcher for the Giants he's become a key part of this bullpen a career-high 71 relief appearances last year this is the right-hander Gene Machi and he'll work to Aaron Hill who will hit for the pitcher Pitcher spot now seventh in the Arizona order. We saw Machi work one third of an inning Monday in the opener. Didn't go all that well for him. It started in the seventh. Leadoff man's aboard. He's the time run. Shortstop, Cliff Well, when you're the number two hitter in the inning, you love to see that leadoff guy get on, especially if you're a left handed hitter that can hook a ball through that hole on the right side. Anytime you can weaken that defense with a base runner, that next hitter loves it. Penny doubled the lead off the fifth. McGee in on the grass at third. Pennington shows bunt, pops it up. And she lets it land. And they're going to have an issue here. Well, it just turns into a forced play at second base, but she let that ball drop. Of course, Aaron Hill saw the ball in the air, so he did the right thing. He retreated back to first base, and when she let it drop, uh, you're just swapping runners down there at first base. There was going to be an out on the play, whether he catches it in the air or not. Rob Drake, immediately the plate umpire will signal safe once the ball hits the ground. And now it's just pick your poison. So that scored a fielder's choice. And it brings up Jordan Pacheco.
Take it's not care. like, excuse me, partner. I was just going to say it's not like Cliff Pennington to pop up a butt. He's one of the most solid fundamental players the Diamondbacks have. And normally uh, when asked to put that butt down, he is lock solid. Jordan came in to catch for Gerald Laird after a double switch earlier in the ball game. Taking a look up at the scoreboard, Bob. Dodgers are beating the Giants 6-2 in the fifth at Dodger Stadium. Adrian Gonzalez tonight for L.A. Three home runs. All of them off Andrew Kashner. I think Brandon McCarthy started that game for the Dodgers, I believe. Yes, he did. Boy, Gonzalez has got five homers already. <laughs> Dodgers coming in here this weekend. Big weekend at Chase Field. Fireworks on Friday. Hello Kitty bobblehead on Saturday. Multicultural Street Festival on Sunday. And how about Saturday's ball game? That is a must see. Archie Bradley's major league debut comes against Clayton Kershaw. The 1 0 to Pacheco. That's going to be something. That's going to be fun. Been waiting for that ball game. I know Archie's been waiting a long oh, time. Yeah. I think we all have too. Oh, yeah. But how about the, just the synergy there? Bradley and Kershaw. Both guys, by the way, seventh overall picks in the draft out of high school. Kershaw five years earlier out of Texas. And Archie out of Oklahoma. Pacheco drives it to right. Maxwell has room. Two down. It's not jumping tonight the way it normally does with the roof and panels open. I think it has something to do with the temperature, the barometric pressure, all that stuff. But uh, Maxwell hit a ball to left field that looked like it was way gone, and David Peralta made a catch at the wall, and that ball didn't carry nearly as far as I thought it was going to. Temperatures were in the low 70s at first pitch, a little cooler now, not much wind to speak of. After the ball was flying out of here last night. A.J. Pollock. A.J. was hit by a pitch to lead off the first for Arizona. Got to third on a two-base throwing error by Heston, the pitcher, and scored on an Owings ground out when the Diamondbacks scored the game's first run without the benefit of a base hit. Dave McKay coaching at first. Hard to third. McGee knocks it down and throws him out. The leadoff single goes for naught. We are through seven, and the Diamondbacks trail it 3 2. It's another one run ball game here. Chase.
D-backs Live presented by Century Link, our post-game show. And Joe, tonight in the pregame show, I talked about Jeremy Hellickson, you know, a veteran pitcher. Chris Heston, a guy who was only making his second major league start, and now maybe on paper the D-backs could have had an advantage against him. What did you think about Heston? Well, sometimes it's the fear of the unknown, not having seen any, seen that pitcher. You're not quite sure what he throws. I was impressed by him, those three pitches, quality pitches, maybe just wild enough. I'll break down his outing and show you how he's able to keep the Diamondbacks at bay. All right, more from Joe Borowski later, guys. Also, he'll look, of course, at Jeremy Hellickson's first start as a Diamondback. Thank you, Joe and Jody. Chris Heston, our T-Mobile game-changing player, his second big league start, he did very well. Last night, Evan Marshall came on in the eighth. Worked a one, two, three inning through ten pitches, and he's out there to start the eighth again tonight. Pitcher spot is due up second in the inning for the Giants, and Joe Panic is in the on deck circle. Hector Sanchez, the catcher, leads it off. He's poised to make a catch there. Well, that's a slick looking uniform for a little league. Huh? That, that is a great look. That's nice. And then rather always it gets under the glove and into right. Sanchez aboard for the second time tonight. Top spin grounder kind of picking up speed as it went through that infield. Chris just didn't get his glove to the spot that time. And he scored a base hit. Well, Panic was in the on deck circle. He's back in the dugout now, and apparently Gregor Blanco will take the at bat in the pitcher spot. Pitch hitting for Gene Machi. Number seven, Gregor Blanco. Mike Harkey out to the mound. Quick review of the scouting report on Gregor Blanco. Also, uh, probably defensively to talk about what they're going to do should uh, Blanco attempt to bunt Sanchez up to second base. Now, earlier in the ball game when Sanchez was on first, uh, we saw Bruce Bochy start him towards second base on a sacrifice bunt attempt by the pitcher Heston. Mentioned the fact Sanchez does not run particularly well, and even on a good bunt, if he's not breaking for second as the pitch is delivered, he might not get to second base. Fans, baseball is finally here. It's happening all around us, so grab a Pepsi and some friends and get out to a D-backs game. Live it. It's for the thrill of the game. Pepsi, live for now. Pepsi is the official soft drink of the Arizona Diamondbacks. So Jake Lamb will come in on the grass at third. Goldie holding Sanchez on the bag at first, and Gregor Blanco steps in. He has started the first two games of the series in right field, when... 0 for 4 Monday, 1 for 4 last night, doubled and scored a run. Shows bunt, and it's foul. Third base coach, Roberto Kelly. FoxSportsArizona.com, all your Arizona sports news on there. You can read about Gonzo tonight. Mm -hmm. You can't forget to mention Gonzo being inducted into the Arizona Hall of Fame. Pretty distinguished class he's going in with. Charles Barkley, Cotton Fitzsimmons, Joe Gilmartin. Leo's father. Yeah, quite a crowd. Well deserved. Congratulations, Gonzo. One and one. Well, Leo, of course, uh, Gub, not working with the with the Gubman Candy next to us on the radio side. He's uh, at the ceremonies honoring his dad, of course, who's also in the Basketball Hall of Fame. That's Leo's usual seat. I think it's an upgrade, frankly. <laughs> In the air, left field, David Peralta.
Uh, there's things a little more calm here pregame without, you know, Leo disrupting things. Yeah, he, he can't be a disruption. Nori Aoki. Daily. Nora Aoki. There is a chance that uh, tonight Leo actually gets Wally pipped. Mm. Could happen. Aoki has been aboard three times, a single, a double, and a walk. He has scored a run. He's driven in one. Been a pain in the neck the whole series. That's why the Giants got him. Yeah, that's why they got him. That's what they like about him. Obviously, doesn't have the same kind of power as a guy like Michael Morse. But uh, it brings different things to the game. Better speed, better contact. Pesky at bats. Funny you have Morse and Sandoval, two big free swingers up there who can do some damage. You replace them with the Oki and McGee. Two contact guys. Kind of changes the personality of your ball club a bit. There's a strike two and one. Aoki won for 14 in the World Series last year against the Giants playing for the Royals. Shot foul, two and two. He's here as a free agent, a one year, $4 million deal. Giants have an option for 2016. Long pause by Mark. Marshall steps off. That's a design play. That's a sign that comes from the bench to the catcher, from the catcher to the pitcher. Just come to a set position and hold the ball. See if the runner at first or the batter at the plate will tip something, maybe a hit and run on. Force the third base coach to go through another set of signs. Maybe you can steal something that way. In the right. And Shaz will hold up at second. And Oki's aboard for the fourth time tonight. He's got three hits and a walk. Fans every weeknight, don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1. You'll get highlights, instant analysis, and live look-ins from around the major leagues. MLB Whip Around weeknights at 4 on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Two on, one out for Matt Duffy. He's got a pair of hits. RBI double in the second, singled in the fourth. Bruce Bochy was talking about Duffy as a hitter. And he's got a minor league batting title at the double A level on his resume. But he said, boy, this kid can hit. He battles up there. There are no at bats that he gives away. A grinder. Got a pretty simple balanced swing, too. That time Evan Marshall able to beat him with a fastball in. Got down there below the trademark and fouled off harmlessly to the right side. That'll happen occasionally, even to a good fastball hitter. When you start the sequence with a breaking ball for a strike and then come back with a fastball inside, it's not uncommon for that hitter to be a little tardy on that heater. Two down. 
couple of real nice breaking balls in that sequence sandwiched around that fastball inside just dropped it right in there. Well, here's that Pagan guy again. Looks like he's up every other time. Giant bullpen busy. Sergio Romo is throwing. Pagan doubled his last time up. This guy's five for 12 to open up the year. on it and he throws him out a pair of singles go for not we go to the home half of the eighth Owings Goldschmidt Peralta two three and four coming up admitted me that on paper to the baseball world this opening series might have seemed like a lopsided matchup against the Giants but in the D-backs clubhouse they never doubted that they could compete with the defending champs and they've shown just that keeping this series close but the players told me to get this series win would be a huge confidence boost heading in to the off day and then welcoming in the Dodgers and you know win one series at a time that's surely a uh, Vintage Tony La Russa from his championship team days and Chip Hale right next to me here in the dugout. He's rallying his team. But the real question is guys does Yvonne have her glasses on? She better because that worked last night. Sergio Romo on for the eighth inning for the Giants. Our third. The answer is yes, by mm -hmm. the way, Kate. There. Here is Chip Hale's mom, Yvonne. So three one run games here with the world champs. Diamondbacks. You know, they've been out hit 12 to 4. Feels like they're they're trailing big here, Bob, but it's a one-run game late. They're just kind of Giants letting them hang around. Just hang around, yeah. See what happens. Rollings is 0 for 3. He's driven in the Diamondbacks first run with an RBI ground down. CO looking for his first hit on the year. Goldie on deck and Peralta behind him. Well, you got to know when you're a right-handed hitter facing Sergio Romo, you're not going to get a fastball middle of the plate in that you can just tee up and drive into the gap or out of the ballpark. You're going to have to battle that slider away. 
Normally when Romo throws a fastball, it's just for effect, just to show the speed. Chases a slider there, and it's a strikeout. Uh, I don't know if it ever started in the strike zone. Maybe on the outside corner and then swept over into that left-handed batter's box for a swinging strike three. I mean, Chris so far looks like he's grinding a little bit there. He, very aggressive. He always is. But, uh, Seal looks like he's grinding a bit to start the season. Here's Goldie doubled and scored his last time up. That's an example of what I'm talking about right there. Romo with an 87 mile an hour two seam fastball, but keeps it out of the zone. He better. Yeah. The numbers for Goldie against the Giants reliever. That's a rarity of back to back fastballs. That one up high out of the zone. And just because it's a 2-0 count, no guarantee you're going to get a fastball. He's just as likely to throw a slider in this count as anything. One hop to second. Duffy spins and throws. Two down. Now, talking to Tom Candiotti, and Candy, of course, uh, the great knuckleball pitcher. And Candy said, you know, I'm, I'm at an airport, and I'm, I'm taking a flight someplace. And you know, I'm waiting at the gate. I, I hand the guy my ticket. I'm going to wait to board the plane. And there's some guy behind me going, boy, that, you know, and anybody can throw a knuckleball. I mean, it doesn't take any talent to throw a knuckleball. Any guy can pick up a ball and throw it with that goofy grip. It's not a real pitch. <laughs> he turns around, and it's Sergio Romo. Because <laughs> Candy had the, uh, the tag on his backpack there oh. that had his name on it. Romo read the name and just started giving him a hard time in the, in the line at the airport. So they had a lot of fun on the plane talking about pitching the whole flight. Crawford, it's short. Yeah. Romo comes in, faces the heart of the order, and works a one, two, three, eight. It's off to the ninth. It's another one-run game. A look at our Cox Gig Life high speed highlights. A 3 2 ball game in the ninth. And Evan Marshall back out there. Buster Posey in for the Giants. 
remember when Evan Marshall came up to the big leagues last year and after about uh, three or four appearances he told us I've never thrown this many off speed pitches in my life. A lot of times when a guy has a big fastball in the minor leagues uh, you get by with one pitch but uh, came up here to the big leagues and Miguel Montero at the time was making him throw sliders making him throw change ups and uh, his breaking ball looks better this year than it did last year looks like he has more confidence in it better release point late break. Boy, he was outstanding down the stretch as a rookie last year, too. Oliver Perez, the left hander, getting loose in the D back bullpen. Go down over his last 37 appearances last season. Evan Marshall pitched to a 1.80 ERA. And had 35 strikeouts in his last 30 innings. But Posey's got good numbers against him, small sample size. Hitters count two balls and a strike. Right center AJ coming in. That drops in front of Trumbo. 13 hits for the Giants. Well, that's one of the toughest balls to gauge as an outfielder. Both AJ Pollock, Mark Trumbo in right field. Just kind of froze in their tracks when Buster took that swing. You expect him to drive the ball. We've seen him hit the ball a long way in this series, but just kind of hit that one off the trademark of the bat, got out there in shallow right center, and fluttered down to the grass. Leadoff man aboard, Casey McGee doubled and scored in the fifth. He's one for four. Have been getting McGee out by pitching him away most of the night. That one got up a bit, but McGee fouls it back. Giants bullpen. Santiago Casilla, the closer, starting to get loose. Diamondbacks in the bottom of the ninth will have Trumbo, Lamb, and the pitcher's spot. Day off tomorrow. A lot of these guys have doubled up tonight. We saw Delgado last night, Marshall last night. We've seen Delgado and Marshall again tonight. Chase Anderson will pitch against the Dodgers Friday in the series opener. So Chip Hale figuring with a day off. And use some of his key back end guys on back to back nights. Hard to left. Peralta backs up. And that ball is gone. Let's see here. We had a fan lean way over. Don't write anything down in ink yet. Casey McGee, a two run homer, and we'll see if the Diamondbacks want to talk fan interference here. Chip Hale is looking back. Glenn Sherlock on the phone with Alan Campbell, the Diamondbacks video coordinator. That was a line drive. They may have a case. Rob Drake, the plate umpire, just sort of hanging around looking at Chip to see if he wants to challenge this. Yeah, it appeared that ball was going to clear the yellow stripe out there in left field, even though a fan didn't make contact with it. And there will be no challenge, apparently, from the D back dugout. And that's gone. Well, hold on, here it comes. He's going to go to the bullpen. He's got Perez loosening. And he'll go to the left hander here. So now 5 2 Giants on the two run homer by Casey McGee. Pitching change back after this.
in the ballpark. He allowed only one home run over his last 47 appearances. We mentioned how Casey McGee, before he went to Japan, was a dead pull hitter, and he got an inside pitch here and turned on it. Yeah, he got jammed quite a bit earlier in the ball game, but a nice quick swing on this one down and through gave him that carry he needed to sneak that one over the stripe in left field. That's a perfect example of a good adjustment by a veteran hitter. He was getting beat inside all night long. Fell behind in the count and then they got him out of way. That time they tried to come inside and he did not allow Evan Marshall in there. And so with Justin Maxwell coming up. Oliver Perez who did a good job against right hand hitters last year. Even though he throws from the left hand side comes out of the Diamondback bullpen. Maxwell singled in the third. He is one for four. Giants have now out hit the D backs 14 to four. Trumbo coming in. Speaking of home runs, Bob, we mentioned the Dodgers. They lead the Padres 6 4. Adrian Gonzalez has five home runs in his first 12 at bats this season. He's homered three times tonight, all three times off San Diego's Andrew Kashner. Gonzalez, the first player in baseball history to hit five home runs. In his team's first three games. Mm. And he's coming in here on Friday. But the ball wasn't supposed to carry well at Dodger Stadium at night. Especially in April. And it's supposed to carry really well here. <laughs> the world's upside down. The world gone mad. Brandon Crawford. Two for four. Pair of singles. He scored a run. He's got an RBI. Hey, when Adrian Gonzalez gets in one of those streaks, he might hit two more tomorrow. Yeah. You know, all oh, those guys, he's red, red hot. He's seeing the ball big, and when he sees the ball big, he hits it a long way. Well, he had that very, very serious shoulder injury and said after the operation for well, more than a year afterward, hey, I'm not a home run hitter anymore. I, I don't have the, the flexibility, the shoulder strength to do that, but now that he's got that operation off in the distance, that power is returned. Padres hanging around down two in the sixth in L.A. Padres got a few guys that might hit some home runs this year too. All right to Pennington at short. Our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game when Brandon Crawford was up to end the third. A.J. Pollock goes and gets it. Room to roam out there in center field for AJ. Knew exactly where he was on the field. He could feel that warning track under his cleats. Timed his jump perfectly and took extra bases away from Brandon Crawford. I would put him up defensively with any center fielder in baseball. I'm right there with you. Great routes, cover so much ground in those gaps. Hector Sanchez, two for four. Just added a run. I think Gonzalez might hit another one. Oh, no. We'll find out when we come back. Bottom nine all the way. It's 5 2.
Had a run. They lead the Padres now 7-4 in L.A. It was just a single for Adrian Gonzalez. He's got three home runs tonight. So Gonzalez for the season so far, the Dodgers' first baseman is 10 for 13. Five of his ten hits are home runs. Santiago Casilla is on to close it out for the Giants. And they work to Mark Trumbo, Jake Lamb, and the pitcher spot in the Arizona ninth. Mark is 0 for 3. The rally gloves are on. Whatever it takes. He's here to win. We're gonna need four runs. And Mark Trumbo, there's a cool looking rally hat. Mark is gonna need another uh, Triple to become the first Diamondback player ever to triple in three straight. Pass ball right down the middle, 0 and 2. Diamondbacks off tomorrow, then a red hot Adrian Gonzalez and the Dodgers in here for three starting Friday. He's got high fastball again. We talked about it in one of Mark's earlier at bats in the ball game. Seems like the Giants uh, must have a note in that advanced scouting report. High fastballs up above the letters. He's chased a few, he's hit a few. Can turn on those pitch and pitches and drive them out of here. I mean, you want him to start laying off those a bit, or just let him kind of do his thing up there? Well, I tell you, the way he's swinging the bat right now, I don't really have a problem with it. He, you know, all throughout spring training, he got on some high fastballs and drove them hard. He just, he, like we talked about earlier, he's just a different guy this year. And last year, I don't think he would have caught up to a lot of those high fastballs, but this year, he's been able to at least foul them off and on occasion and drive them hard. Start swinging pitches over your helmet, then maybe it's time to <laughs> lower your sights a little bit. Bounce the shortstop. Crawford has it. One away. Brings up Jake Lamb. Jake is over for two. He walks back in the fourth. First player in the major leagues with at least seven RBIs in the first two games of the season since Baltimore's Chris Davis two years ago. And the first rookie to drive in seven in his first two games in more than half a century. All right to Duffy at second. Two down. And Ciarte in the on deck circle, and Ender will hit for the pitcher, which is the seventh spot in the diamond back order.
A ball and a strike. Ender Inciarte coming off a very good spring. He hit over 350 in spring training. Played a lot, 24 games. Chris Heston, his second major league start. His birthday is coming up on Friday. He'll turn 27, and he's about to get his first major league win. And he was supposed to pitch the opener later this week for the Triple A team at Sacramento. But with Matt Kane on the DL, Heston was called up. And he did a good job today. Matt Kane is going to go back to San Francisco to get checked out by the Giants' doctors. A strained flexor tendon in his throwing arm. So Heston may be up here for a while. We'll likely run into him again down the road with all the injuries the Giants have in their rotation. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And they're in Ciarte, shoots it the other way. And the Diamondbacks are still alive. Shortstop, click. The fans have heard me say it many times uh, in reference to the Giants starting rotation adversity creates opportunity for somebody else and a guy like Heston jumps in there and strings together some good starting outings uh, he got a chance to win himself a spot in that rotation for a long time and a good spring and he's continued that into this start tonight only five and a third career big league innings going into the ball game and he pitched six here Ball one to Cliff Pennington. Cliff doubled back in the fifth. He's one for three. Matt Kane on the DL for the fifth time since August of 2013. So five DL trips in less than two years. And Ciarte will take second on defensive indifference as Pennington takes his strike. a chance to tie this game up if Cliff Pennington can reach right here would bring the potential tying run to the plate. That would be Jordan Pacheco who's on deck. Not the Diamondbacks again down to their final strike. Slow breaking ball this time from Casilla got Cliff way out in front that time. Pacheco would be next need one more base runner here. Take two of three in the series. They win the finale 5 2. Bob, we talked a lot about the offense for the Diamondbacks the first two games as Heston gets his first big league win, but uh, it's not going to be there every night, not at this level. No, it's Major League Baseball. It's not going to be your night every night.